Welcome back guys, my name is Patrick and this is my first look at a potential 2022-2023 roster for the Edmonton Oilers. I'll be doing a few different versions of rosters over the course of the summer as we learn new information. Let's start with a look at my forwards. Here are the key departures. Evander Kane leaves as a free agent, Derek Brassard leaves as a free agent, and Zach Cassian is bought out of the remainder of his contract. Here are the key additions. Mason Marchment is signed as a free agent from the Florida Panthers to a two-year, $5 million deal with a $2.5 million AAV. Dylan Holloway makes the roster out of training camp, and college free agent signing Noah Philp surprises and makes the roster out of training camp. I have Jesse Pugliarvi, Kyler Yamamoto, and Ryan McLeod being signed to two-year bridge contracts. I think the contracts will come in between 2.5 to 3.5 million for Jesse and Yamo, so I put an estimated total of 3 million. For Ryan McLeod, I did an estimate of 2 million. I know the Oilers have interest in bringing Evander Kane back, and there's been no denying his contributions, but at the same time, I just think the Oilers will have trouble making the money work. I've heard Mason Marchment's name mentioned as a possibility for the Oilers, and I think his proposed cap hit would be much easier for the Oilers to make work. I have Dylan Holloway beginning the year on the third line, but we could see him in the top six before too long. If Marchman is on a two-year deal, it's not prohibitive for the Oilers going forward, and Dylan Holloway and Ryan McLeod have growth opportunities. The Oilers will also have young players like Xavier Borgo and Carter Savoy knocking on the door before too long. I also wanted to leave the Oilers' cap room to bring in a potential top six addition at the trade deadline. At the bottom of the lineup, college free agent signing Noah Philp has the potential to surprise as the fourth line center. If he's not ready to go, or has challenges, Ryan McLeod, Derek Ryan, Devin Shore, and Brad Malone would all be there with the ability to step in. I think Brad Malone is brought back on another two-way deal with an estimated cap hit of 800000 The total cap hit for this forward group would be 49542500 Here's a look at the defense. The key departures are Tyson Berry and Chris Russell. I have Tyson Berry moving in a trade to the Arizona Coyotes and Chris Russell departs as a free agent. There are no new arrivals, but I have Philip Roberg and Marcus Niemelainen up with the team full-time from Bakersfield. I also have the Oilers re-signing Brett Kulak to a two-year, $4 million deal with a $2 million cap hit. Kulak has the ability to play both the left and right side, and he takes over for Tyson Berry. With this decor, you are counting on improvement from within. It also leaves you with cap space to upgrade it at the trade deadline. The total cap hit for the defense? 22,527,808. In goal, I have the Oilers letting Miko Koskinen walk as a free agent, and the Oilers buying out the remaining year of Mike Smith's contract. In free agency, the Oilers signed goaltender Vili Husso from the St. Louis Blues to a four-year, $20 million deal with a $5 million cap hit. And Stuart Skinner is in the tandem full-time, coming up from Bakersfield. The total goalie cap hit? 5,750,000. The Oilers will have the following five players taking up dead cap space. Here's a look at how long they'll be on the books. Milan Lucic has retained money, and Sekera, Neal, Cassian, and Smith are all buyouts. It is a long list now, but in just two years' time, they would be down to only two players with dead cap space. So overall, the Oilers will be facing a salary cap of 82500000 and with the totals you see tallied up, they will have a grand total cap hit of 79686976 Oscar Clefbaum will likely be back on long-term injured reserve, giving them an extra $4,167,000 to maneuver with. The Oilers will also likely have some bonus overage charges counting against the cap for next year, so the extra space will come in handy. Like I said, I'll take a few more cracks at this over the course of the summer, but just thought I'd share this with you guys and get your thoughts. Here's one more look at the forwards, defense, and goaltending on my first version of the 2022-2023 Edmonton Oilers roster. Well, what do you think guys? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If this is your first visit to the channel and you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing for all the latest Oilers content. You've been watching the Oilers Fanatic. 
Thanks for being a fan. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you soon. Take care.